You know, it seems like I remember hearing a famous guy say that. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Well, we had a happy little accident, or a happy accident, uh, in this casting today. Uh, yeah, yeah. I almost said something to the effect of, you know, we all need to stay in practice. We all need to kind of keep our skills up because I forgot some things. I, uh, I clearly haven't done this recently, and um, yeah, it just showed. It showed there were some things that showed. And that was going to be the spirit of the video was we all need to make, you know, we just need to keep our skills up and keep working on this stuff. But then I had, <laughs> I had the happy accident. So let's, uh, let's get to the casting. I'll show you the casting first and then I'm going to stop it. And I'm going to talk about where the happy accident comes in. All right. <laughs> so I was going to start talking about this whole ramming up the mold and everything like I normally do, but uh, I'm sitting here doing this in my uh, in my room doing voiceover and uh, I can hear my heart valves clicking. So those of you that are wondering what that annoying clicking sound is that you're hearing through your headphones or whatever, it's my heart valves. I have mechanical heart valves and uh, sometimes they get really loud. Anyway, we've got the we've got the pattern in there. We're going to put up some parting compound on here. Like I used I used diamond part for my parting compound. We're going to riddle on some fine sand to uh, gets get the surface nicely coated. And with that sand on there, we can go ahead and fill the rest of the mold up with loose sand that we're going to go ahead and ram in. Now we start from the outside. I was ram around the outside edges, and that's just because I want to help hold everything in place. When you go around the outside, you kind of create this, I guess, area. Things aren't going to move around on you. I've got two parts in there, and I don't want them moving on me. Go ahead and fill the the, the uh, mold back up again, and we'll go ahead and ram it in with the butt end of the of the ramming tool. Get it nice and packed down, and uh, get it ready to get struck off. Speaking of striking it off, there's a strike. We're going to strike the top of the sand off just to get a nice smooth surface. Now I've already made the first two mistakes that I'm going to, well, the two mistakes that I'm going to make here. You see my hand going underneath there. Uh, first thing is. I should have put a board under this thing. And now I've just recognized my second mistake. And it is that I didn't drill any holes in the pattern. And I recognized that as soon as I turned it over, I was like, ah, I got to drill holes in there. So we're going to start over again here. I have uh, a board now. I'm going to put everything on. We're going to lay it out again. When I turn it over here, you will uh, you'll finally, you'll see the holes that I drilled in, but basically the same kind of thing is going to happen here that you just saw. Get it laid out, part of compound, sand, ram, all that. All right, there we are. Now with the board, it holds my pattern in. I don't have to worry about it falling out when I turn it over. A lot of times these small flat patterns will. There are the holes that I drilled in. And we'll go ahead and get our cope rammed up now. First thing I'm going to do is put on the uh, the spin trap, get that sand out of that hole first. And we'll put the spin trap down. And then we'll get, uh, I got to blow this hole out here for my, my uh, sprue as well. I always, I always mold a hole in my runner so that I can just place the sprue down inside that, uh, press it in there, and then it holds in place really nicely, just like that. And I'm always guaranteed the alignment's going to be right. And you notice the gate going in from this, coming right off the runner. It's actually up on the top edge of the runner so that um, the metal will, the metal will run across the bottom of the runner first. And as it starts to fill, it will raise, and then it will probably, it will come in across that gate coming into the part. So we're doing basically the same process here, parting compound, riddle, uh, riddling on sand, filling up with loose sand, and ramming again, or again, ramming from the outside in. So we're going to go around the outside of this thing first, filling it back up again after I've got everything rammed with the, the uh, peen end of the uh, ramming tool. And then we'll use the butt end here, and we'll go ahead and just pack everything in there nice and tight. 
so that we can have a, we have a nice a firm mold here and we'll also have a nice surface I can strike off. There we go, we're striking it off. And I realize that I probably should pull these parts out, but it just, I don't know. And there's the third mistake. I didn't show you me cutting the, 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 uh, the base and I didn't show me cleaning out the mold, any of that. I apologize. Uh, you can go watch any of my other videos and see that process happen. All right, we're going to have a pour. Uh, try to get down really close to the basin so that I don't have to worry about, you know, splashing around. It looks like I may have starved the sprue right there. It's quite possible. Um, again, not being in practice, not remembering the things and even the muscle memory that you, you'll, you'll lose that over time. So it's important. We need to keep practicing, keep doing what we're supposed to be doing. All right, let's get her opened up and see what we've got. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And good, we got a full mold there. Actually came out pretty well. I was concerned about a couple of the real fine lines on that um, uh, that helmet that's in the middle of the, the plaque, but uh, they actually molded pretty well. I never show you me taking things out of the, the cope, so here you go, me knocking the part out of the sand. Actually comes out pretty easy, just put a couple of taps on the runner there and you see a lot of it just broke right away. The sand comes off without a whole lot of effort. Boom, now we're clean. I'll show you the part. Oh, come on, hold it still. There you go. It looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. All right, so that's it. Um, I got it all cleaned up. I cut all the, I cut the runner off, and I kind of cleaned up the edges and stuff. So, you know, it looked, it came out like you'd expect. It cleaned up nice. And then I thought, you know, it would be really cool if I could anodize this thing and, uh, you know, dye it with a like a red color and then clean off the the face and stuff. I thought, you know, that'll look really slick. I've always kind of wanted to try anodizing, so. I went out to my uh, my buddy, uh, my mate, <laughs> Mark Pressling, and uh, I watched his video, uh, this one right here, his Metal Finishing 101 video. I watched it probably, I don't know, five, six, ten, <laughs> something like that times, trying to figure out stuff. And rather than kind of really show you in detail what I did, I followed his steps, okay? I did what he, what he showed. Uh, uh, this is my my rig running. Uh, I used two aluminum cathodes instead of the the lead cathodes that he used. But other than that, it was it was pretty much the same. I used the same bi bisodium sul the sodium bisulfate <laughs> uh, as my solution. Now my power may have been a little bit high. I think my power was probably too high, but uh, I don't know. So I did. Uh, you saw that running. I took it in and I went ahead and dyed it. I put it in, I got the RIT dye um, because I was told, you know, I saw that somewhere, probably on YouTube. <laughs> you all know what you can get off of YouTube, right? <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I used RIT dye and I soaked it and I soaked it and I soaked it. And like Mark told me, I kept it around 50 degrees centigrade. That's like 100 and I think it was 120, right around 120 Fahrenheit. I kept the solution warm for probably two hours, and I kept the thing the thing in there uh, soaking and soaking and soaking, and just never, it never took. I left it in overnight, got up in the morning, rinsed it off, and it had a slight red tinge to it, but it, uh, when, as soon as I put it in the boiling water to seal the pores, Nah, it all came off, so it didn't uh, it didn't work. But but let me show you this thing because this is you know my happy accident. I really kind of like it. I'm kind of digging this finish on here. There are probably plenty of you that would say, "Oh well, you burned the heck out of out of the aluminum or or whatever." I think it looks cool. So here it is. Let me uh, you know what? Let me bring it up close for you. There it is up close, and I kind of like the finish. It looks dark and heavy. It almost looks like a 
I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't look like aluminum to me anymore. It doesn't. It's not. You know, it's not the shiny, bright, silvery kind of finish that you would normally get. So I'm kind of digging that. I kind of like it. it. It feels real nice. It's, I mean, it's almost. It feels. It's really smooth. Anyway, happy accident. Didn't turn out like I expected or I wanted, but I am pretty darn happy with that. So. There you go. Lessons learned. Uh, I don't know what the lesson learned here is. I don't know how to anodize. Oh, here, I got to show you this before I go. Before I go. So I'm chatting with, with Mark um, on Instagram. We're, we're chatting one night or one of his mornings and about this. And then I got to show you this conversation. This is a squirrel by here. And then he says that. He said, it's like, what? You mean you can't? Anodize and dye castings? <laughs> uh, so, if you've got the secret on how to anodize and dye, I want to color dye these guys, an aluminum casting, I would love to hear how you did it. Um, yeah, Jared, <laughs> calling you out. How did it, what do I got to do, man? So, that's about it. Um, it was still fun. I still did some stuff I wanted to try, and uh, I guess I'm digging the color. I'm I really am liking it. That's about all I got for you guys today. Um, as always, as always, as always, be a blessing to somebody. Just say something nice to somebody, you know? Be nice to somebody, and have a great day.